Howdy there, folks. I'm Kaiser Neko, and welcome back to the Movie Breakdown. This time, we're covering Super Android 13. Woohoo! Uh, okay, I'll cut that out now. First of all, Happy New Year! 2015 sure was fantastic, wasn't it? Full of a myriad of great films, the savior of anime, and five episodes of Dragon Ball Z abridged. And a movie! And a special, hey? Uh, that was late. Huh. Okay, well, uh, listen. Let's be real here. Our release schedule for DBZA in 2015 wasn't fantastic. Partially because so many of us had to make a lot of big changes. Three of us moved, one of us started an entire new series, we've been expanding our content, created an official LLC for our company, and even acquired a real-life studio that we're moving into later this month. But honestly, those excuses don't really make up for the lack of content. I'd love to give you something concrete, but all I can say is that I'm going to be refocusing my efforts squarely on Dragon Ball Z Abridged. My personal, and I doubly stress personal, goal is to have at least one official DBZA video out a month, aka a movie, special, or episode. Now, I can't promise anything. In fact, I expect at least two of the months to fail. But I'm going to try. Unfortunately, that does mean I'm no longer editing Helsing Ultimate Abridged. That is going to be handled by Stefan Krosix, a good friend of ours, a very talented artist and editor, and someone we feel confident handing the reins over to. I'm personally overseeing the transition and giving him feedback as he slips into the role. That being said, let's get started. We got lots to cover. Now, gonna try and breeze through this part. <gasps> Implant, newly drawn, implant, 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 newly drawn, altered, implant, implant, newly drawn, redrawn and implanted, implant, newly drawn, altered and implanted, newly drawn, altered and implanted, implant, altered and implanted, newly drawn, newly drawn, newly drawn, implant, and altered. However, we also used a couple new artists to help the lip flaps in this movie, including Stefan Krosex, who did these shots here and here, and Christopher Kerberfernyosi, who did this shot, this shot, this shot, entire expression changes and flaps for this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot, and this shot. Bam! Lip flaps finished! Now how about we get to the meat of things? Visual edits. A quick thing to point out is that this opening shot here is from the movie, while these shots are from the series, our episode specifically. And these shots are from the movie. This shot of Cell is from the series, and I just copied and pasted Cell on top and made him vibrate with the wiggle tool. Now we have the title sequence. I cheated again by using a pre-made template for the Android 13 text here, but everything after that was all me in Photoshop and After Effects. A small fun fact, we almost called the movie Android the 13th. In this shot, I scaled up Gohan's eyes to help better express his surprise. I also moved Goku's eyes down in this shot here. Now see, this is a joke we'd been planning since before we even started scripting the film. When Android 15 scans him, I had it stop at his crotch and scan it as a possible weak point to help set it up for later in the film. I extracted and reutilized the components appropriately. To help speed up the action in this next shot, I roto-brushed Android 14 in this shot here to close the distance faster than the original. This part's kinda ridiculous. See, I didn't realize when we scripted this that both Krillin and Gohan flew off at separate times. As such, I took the shot of Gohan flying away and roto-brushed only him and his power trail into the shot. Freeze-framing it, it doesn't look incredibly clean, but in motion it's harder to notice. The next big visual edit is this shot of Android 13's trucker hat being lowered from the ceiling as well as the steam being released. I used some stock mist sprays for the steam, an animatronic arm found online, and cut out his hat from another shot. I then moved them appropriately. Something that a lot of people may not catch but I wanted to make sure was there is that in this shot of Android 13 losing his hat, I cut it out of these shots here and even added a small impact sound to indicate that the iceberg had struck his hat. Now, I'm not an artist, not in the traditional sense anyway, 
I can barely draw stick figures, and half the time, when I'm redrawing lip flaps for characters, I'm just so spectacularly happy that they usually only require a minimal amount of skill. However, this shot of Trunks here, that's just ugly. So I did a little bit of rhinoplasty on him. Also, in this shot of Goku, I removed his sweat drop. Hey, guess who wasn't originally in this shot? Or in this shot? Yep, that's the rotor brush tool again. Also, see this shot of Android 13? Well, this is him originally. As you can see, he's already sustained battle damage, and I couldn't have that incongruity with the footage I'd used before, so I removed it. Also, I moved Vegeta's eyes here as he was originally looking downward. Krillin and Gohan in this shot originally come up at the same time, and don't stop halfway like in our movie. I fragmented their movements and had them take turns. I also overlaid a little bit of footage of the three characters as Super Saiyans on Dr. Jiro's little screen here. This shot of Android 15's arm up is a completely new art asset, drawn by Zack Manley, a regular artist and animator for the series. Speaking of Zack Manley, you see this doggy treat here? Also animated by him. To get the effect of it being blown away, I took the original footage, reversed it, and moved it over to the left. Now, the biggest scene in the entire movie to me? The flash forward. I'll save my opinions on the scene until fun facts, but for this shot of Goten losing his existence due to Goku's, uh, Dragon Balls being made inert, I ended up cutting Goten out and making a version of the background without him, utilizing the fill tool in Photoshop. I then used a transition tool in After Effects to fade him out. Now, in this frame, I needed a setup outside the cave before Goku was blown out of it. However, the establishing shot originally starts mid-explosion. That required me to take this shot, replace the water, and also create this negative to help begin the explosion. This edit is another favorite. When Vegeta throws a blast at Android 13, he barely misses and it flies off into the distance. In our version, it hits Goku instead. I had a lot of fun making it curve at that last moment. Now, let's talk about these shots. They're just black and white, slightly filtered stills of the original shot zoomed in. A lot of people think these are Dukes of Hazard references. They're really not. They're just parodies of the old Southern narrator. Wanted to clear that up. Also, there's a shot of Goku's skull here. This was a last minute addition made by Mark Swint, the same gentleman who designed the 3D time machine model for History of Trunks, as well as the Capsule Corp ship, and drew the baby Piccolo from Cooler 2 Return of Cooler's Revenge The Reckoning. Now, the most impressive visual edit in this movie, Android 13's Trucker Hat animation. Some people have no idea that it wasn't in the original movie. In fact, it's completely original, drawn by Zack Manley. I put a few filters over it to help give it some depth of field. In this shot of Krillin, I moved his eyes to look over at Trunks. For this scene, I used a shot of Jero's laboratory with the lights powered down, then used the cropping tool in After Effects with feathered sides to give the illusion of doors opening, light shining inward. This entire beautifully animated credit sequence was created by Mosco X, and the entire song was performed and co-composed by Cliff, Eintunes, Weinstein, and guest musician Ryan Dricky. And lastly, this shot of Vegeta and Piccolo was several times shorter in the original. I took the looping animation of the water, repeated it to the time needed, then slowed down the rest of the footage and used the frame blending to help cut down on jerkiness. And that, friends, was visual edits. A lot of love went into this movie, which you'll find out more about in Fun Facts. This script was a demon from hell for us. We scrapped it twice before we finally settled on how we wanted to handle things. One of the biggest turtles was Androids 14 and 15. They're utterly devoid of personality in the original version and have very little dialogue at all. We ultimately settled on having to draw new lip flaps for both the characters, as well as having to give Android 14 a rather unique gimmick. His gimmick, by the way, is pretty strange, actually. His voice is actually composed of an image that had been converted into an audio file using the program Photosounder. You can actually download a free copy of the program take recordings of his audio, and convert them back into images. The decision for subtitles was actually made very late in the process as well, but we felt like relying solely on people figuring out the gimmick would limit the comedic possibilities of the character. That and writing Android 14's last words was far too much fun for me to pass up. Early on in the film, the characters mention Korn and Yajirobe's wedding. 
If you're curious what that's about, I actually recorded a silly little conversation between the two characters when gay marriage was legalized in the United States that ties it all together. You can find it on our SoundCloud here. Link also in the description. By the way, that's Richard Cheese singing Disturbs Down With The Sickness in the background. Look it up! He does lounge covers of popular music, it's great. The banjo cover of the Imperial March was made by iTunes. We wanted to work in some country covers of rock songs, but they're not really all that popular. So we settled on a lot of Borderlands 2 music, as well as a little bit of Bastion. With the southern overtones of Android 13, it felt like the best bet. Not to mention, I have an affinity for both those soundtracks. Speaking of which, I gave Android 15 a bit of a 1970s funk motif to match his design. I wanted to harken back to those old blaxploitation films of the era. It was a ridiculous amount of fun, actually, and I'd love to give more characters that sort of treatment in the future. This scene right here is a reference to another weekly Tube Show video, Piccolo Lays a Beating. Link in the description. Don't know how much more I have to tell y'all to watch his stuff. He actually voices Kami, so we got the go-ahead straight from the source to homage the joke. The voice of Gohan in this scene is Justin Briner. He's the voice of Cloud in Final Fantasy VII Machine Abridged. Now, there's been a little bit of controversy over the decision to cast him. Future Gohan in History of Trunks was played by Zach Holzman, but Gohan in this timeline is a very different character, and while it may not make much sense from a biological perspective, his voice ultimately should reflect that difference. We think Justin is the perfect casting choice for what we're aiming for with Buu Saga Gohan, and I ask you not to judge him from this small scene alone. Please allow him to come into his own. Thank you. Also, our headcanon with this movie is that it takes place in an alternate timeline where Cell never appeared and the team managed to beat the androids. The font at the end? Bleeding Cowboys. Because Cowboys. Because Red Ribbon Redneck. And that's it, children. Thank you for tuning in for another breakdown. Between working on episode 52 and the breakdown for episode 51, I've got a decently busy January ahead of me. I hope you all have a wonderful new year and stick to your resolutions. Remember, you're worth the effort. If you guys want to support us, check out our gaming channel. We also have a Patreon. All of your support goes a long way to make sure that the people at Team Four Star get paid for their work. So thank you all, and I'll see you for the breakdown for episode 51. Woohoo! Yeah! Woohoo! I never tell you my mom grew up in Texas. Woo -hoo!